your inner reality in the most authentic way. So if you look at the human design, right, diagrams, the different types, I always talk about the mind, the heart, the body. There's also the spirit, the person, the personality of your spirit that God, right, okay, gave the mind, body, heart to. This might be too much for some people. If you've not listened to any of the programs I've held before, if you're not a member of my school, then you might already go, whoa, okay, let's, I won't go back to explaining everything because I continue to explain it, right, in my school. But just get this understanding that you have a personality that is spiritual, right? What you think, how you think, um, what you're here to do, your vision, your purpose, your hopes, dreams, aspiration resides virtually. Let me just say virtually. Back, 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 inside you. Nobody can see it. Your spouse doesn't know. Nobody knows. People make best guess of what you really want out of your life. Okay? Okay, Rana Girl says, thank you, Tony. I'll look at your info on your site. Yes, go there. Um, download it. Um, yeah, you. that assessment itself, it's, it's designed, the way it's written, when you read it, there are questions, and that question, those questions will activate self-reflection. It will take you, it will take you into yourself so that you understand, unpack what's going on inside you, and you can see it and, and better make the right judgment. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm I'm explaining self-agency right now. This idea that your body, okay, in the physical world, as I'm speaking right now. I'm my own agent. I'm representing myself. I'm here because I want to. I'm saying what I want to say. I'm saying it how I want to say it. I'm presenting myself the way I want to my own pleasure. To I am the approval. <laughs> I am the approval of whether I did a great job or not. Meaning, the version of me you're seeing and you're experiencing physically is the agent of myself. I'm representing myself, okay? And so the things I say is to my pleasure. How I say it is to my pleasure. This is also part of independent thinking because representing yourself with your full body is the whole assignment of man. However, most people cannot do it well if when they were young, people questioned you and you don't trust yourself anymore. You don't trust your own. Most people mute. When you don't develop communication skills, self-expression skills, how to be your the best agent. Because for success, for wealth, for promotion, you will go and ask for the promotion. Yourself, you must prepare your body. You must prepare yourself to represent you in the best way possible physically that's why you train yourself that's why you equip yourself that's why you give your when we say invest in yourself is that make sure that your physical representative is well equipped well trained well empowered to stand tall in the world and stand with your grace your power to get you everything you want to get because no matter how much you pray for christians kneel down kneel down kneel down kneel down and pray Engage with God. You see, when God is done with you privately, he will send you into public arena to go and represent him. <laughs> There's nothing you can... you Your spiritual relationship, mature. When all is said and done, that is not his still virtual connection with you and heaven. When God says, glorify God, don't be a candle hidden under the bushel, shine that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. God is also calling you to be an agent, an ambassador of your relationship with God. That the things you do here on earth will count. And to make sure you are doing a fantastic job at it, you have to be speaking the truth in the most authentic version of you and also improving yourself to continue to get better at that job. But many people are doing bad job. <laughs> you know, you know, emotions and feelings. When you are doing a bad job, 
the indicator light, wah, 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 anxiety, wah, 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 is that other people's thoughts have hijacked your agents. So now, you, the physical, is now the representative of wah, 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 anger, doubt. You are now speaking things, gossiping, right? Who's, is that what you are here to do? <laughs> that's that's why people will give a that's why God will say, Is that what I said? Saul, Saul, is that what I sent you to do? Eh, you are killing Christians, you are so scholarly. You were you studied under the best scholars of your time. You went to school, hey, IQ, best scholars of scholars, Roman, Roman, all that intelligence. You are using it to kill Stephen. Go after my people. You see the road of Damascus. God called him out. This agent, you are not my agents. You are the agent of the evil. You are it, God said it is me. How do, you are you are kicking against the God. you will hurt yourself. If not for God's mercy, intercepting Saul on the Damascus and calling him out. This your scholarly behavior is against my will for you. Whose agent are you? It's not my agent, though. In fact, you've set your own face against mine. So you better fix yourself today. Because to be my agent, you will act in accordance to my will for your life. You will bring your will under my will. You will chop some training. Because many people can be so, oh, I went to school, I went to school, but they are misbehaved. Oh, I know God. Ah, but in a church, bad behavior, running rampant recklessly. I'm the chairman of God Association. As long as you're not submitting your will under the will of God. Bad agents. <laughs> bad agents. They plenty. They are plenty all over the world. They'll be using titles. I am this. I am that. I am this. Okay, what are you using your power to do? Breaking people down inferiority complex in creating insecurities other people are afraid jumping jumping bad bosses they are everywhere oh our father in the lord but what are they doing breaking the destiny of people down the day you mature spiritually emotionally energetically intellectually physically and God can tell you his own words. You can be a channel and vessel for God. That's when you start seeing, that's when you start resisting what I call pure nonsense. Because ignorance of your own authority to be the priest of your own life will make you bow to idols that want to replace the God in your life. Gideon, go and tear down your father's idol. Because when God wants to use you, God will use independent thinkers, people who can think clearly. When God says go, you go. God says come, you come. But when say God says go, you're like, oh, what would they say? Who are the day? Those, those day are the ones that need to calm down and sit down so that you can serve God. So that you can serve God. The people who question you, the people who say this, are they your God? So self-agency is when your voice and your presence in the physical realm, you are, you are doing what you want to do, how you want to do it. And you are moving forward, regardless of the opinion of other people. You are your own representative. Everybody is here to do that. Your mind, your body is yours. Make it yours. Make it count. Because you need it to fulfill purpose. <laughs> so many people are not fulfilling purpose because their entire being has been hijacked, managing chaos. Other people's agenda. Controlling this, controlling that. Every day is, oh, bag, 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 me. They are busy, busy. You are chairman association of who knows what is going on everywhere. But you don't know what heaven is downloading, trying to download into your life every day. If you are reading other people's newspaper, the one that God wants to give you about your life. No time. Self-agency. Independent thinkers will stand tall saying, on whose behalf are you doing this, saying this, right? Because many people, the clue is when you open your mouth and you hear yourself speak, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, the question is who programmed you? If you didn't program yourself, 
who programmed you to think that way, to speak that way, to behave that way? Because that's the work. Saul, you are going around collecting letter. Who sent you on that errand? Letter to do what? You saw Christians coming. You said they are the enemy of the state. They are the enemy of God. Who did God tell you? <laughs> but it's vibrating. Eh? Standing tall. When they were studying Stephen, Stephen is seeing heaven. I see heaven, glory. Paul is saying, yeah. He thinks he's doing a good job. That that's the assignment. Agent of who? Many people are in churches today vibrating. They think they're the ones to be judging people, questioning people, call, right? Persecuting people, judging people. They're the ones that know who is doing what and not doing what. Question, yeah, how dare you this? Ah, is that the assignment God gave people now? Saul was killing Christians physically. And some people are doing it with their mouth, with the energy, gossip. You are the one who knows what pastor did, didn't do. <laughs> what the choir mistress did, didn't do. <laughs> you will call, ah, you, this, hey, hey, busy, busy, busy body. Minding other people's business and not your own. Hmm? This stuff is hot today. It's hot. So, self-agency. Being the agent of yourself, the voice of yourself, that's part of maturity. Because it starts young, where they say, what do you want? And you check in with yourself and you say what you want. But it can also be robbed from people at a very young age. When you say, this is what I want, and they say, no, you're not going to do this. You're going to say what we say we should do. You're you want to be a doctor? No. You want to be a lawyer? No. You must be what we tell you to do. That point, they've robbed you of your self-agency. To say what you want to say, how you want to say it, to the best of your delights, and move on with your life. There's another concept. Excuse me. So if you're just joining it, we are, we're talking about reclaiming your freedom, let go of anxiety and the need for approval. And this is part of rooted to a lot of inner work. If you're a first generational world builder, there's a lot of stuff because what molded you can break you if you don't fix it. What molded you can also hold you bound if you don't set yourself free. All the goodies, right, that you benefited from when you were a dependent. You want to keep, remain dependent? That's fine. There's dependency all over the world. Other people will do the job you don't want to do, but the day God wants you to be a wealth builder, you have to you have to actually let go of dependence. You have to become an independent thinker and then participate in what I call interdependent relationships, right? Where you use your power to serve other people, other people use their power to serve you, mutual, right? Synergies. You are not dependent on them. They are not dependent on you. You respect them. They respect you because respect and control does not go hand in hand. The moment somebody attempts to control your voice, control your outcomes, that is meaning they're going beyond the boundary lines of they don't know where they end. They don't know where their own voice needs to end, where their own authority needs to end. They don't know where their own assertions need to end. And they don't know, they don't know where your own starts, that you are independent of them. They don't know that. And so those who attempt to control you they won't respect you because respect means they must stop at the boundary line, the energetic boundary, not physical, energetic boundary, that the things they say to you will also have consequences. And also, this is tied to, if they know that your boundaries have consequences, they will check themselves. Just as when you were a child, they, right, they were, there's always consequences to control. People who don't respect you, even when they see your attempt to erect a boundary, they will say, oh, nothing, I can talk to this person anyhow. They right until one day, there is cause you two ought to have consequences of bad behavior. And forever say, so are you meant to stand alone? I think you are still typing. You mean, did you just join? There was something important. You want to replay, watch the replay, okay? So you. Okay, this is, I think my mouse is playing funky, right? Okay, let me bring this back. I'll keep the mouse up above. You missed the point. You want to watch the replay. Where I explained independence, being an independent person, being interdependent and being dependent. This stuff is real. You are, humans are not here to do life alone. Make sense? Have you finished typing? Okay, so... How do you, okay, let me put this up so other people can. 
So how do you detach and, and do it alone with no stress and stand alone? I think, okay. Yes, I just joined. Okay, you just joined. Okay, okay, okay. So I shared earlier, and you want to catch the replay, okay? Pray you are blessed. Yes, yes, yes. There's blessing here. We're sharing blessings. Independence, interdependence, dependence. Humans are not here to do life alone. Life is in phases. When you are born, you are dependent. Even here in the US, like you, you, for tax purposes, if you have children, they are dependent, meaning their source, their livelihood, their care, you are responsible, you are in control, da, 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 da. Okay. However, I also talked about transition from childhood to adulthood. Some cultures abuse the natural order God has put in place. They want you to be dependent all through your life. They want, to, they want you to be a child, to not grow spiritually, emotionally. They want, they want you for the rest of their life to be dependent spiritually, energetically, emotionally, intellectually, mentally on them. This is what breaks people. It creates anxiety because on the other side, the recipient of control will not be well. When people don't allow you to become independent of them, anybody, it could be parents, it could be anybody, when they don't honor your boundary, when you leave but they don't let you leave, and energetically, they are still trying to control the outcomes of your life, energetically, you know this, it breaks things in people. Ultimately, people pay with their health. I've talked about it. Watch, watch that replay. Let's move on. Okay, the next thing I want to explain, so we've talked about self-agency. Just I'm just touching this thing very, very high level. It goes deeper. The next thing I want to talk about is individuation. Individuation, becoming an individual, right? Is that when a child is born, okay, from the mother's womb into childhood, generally speaking, children are not given um, rights. You know, rights to vote, <laughs> right for their votes to count, rights to be recognized as an individual with autonomy and can act as an agent of themselves. You remember children, sometimes there are some things when a child wants to do in a society, they will say, go and bring your parents. Okay? Meaning the society does not acknowledge that you are mature intellectually, spiritually, emotionally. You may not know the consequence of this thing you're about to sign. So an adult needs to be present. You see, individuation comes out of when you are maturing out of your family unit, out of your family of origin. And it comes with a lot of things. Like when I say independent thinker, when you can start rationalizing, once you can start thinking clearly, once you can start th thinking and behaving in a separate way from other people, Yes, you may have been raised, you may have grown up in a, in a family unit that says, this is how we do life. They may have programmed you. This is how you think. This is what you say. This is what you don't say. Oh, this is how you dress. This is how you don't dress. Ah, if you do this, this. Ah, cost and consequences. Ah, if you do this, da, 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 da. They programmed you. If you carry that programming, hook, line, and sinker, and move that programming the rest of your life, you still use that system. You, you haven't individuated fully. Unless you're saying that robot system is sufficient to guide you the rest of your life. But when you become an independent thinker and you're gaining self-agency, you will start seeing your reality through your own individual eyes. <laughs> you start questioning. You start taking your microscope and saying... <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Individuation is you can step back, observe it, and go, I don't agree. No, that was good for you. I'm an individual, independent thinker, self-agent. I can start crafting my own system. I can now start programming myself independent as an individual as a free thinker as a self-agent i see what you said thank you for all the blessings 
thank you, thank you. You have to apply gratitude. Ah, thank you for those programming. It, it got me here. Individuation is the detachment, the separation of self to become a full individual and your freedom, okay, to act in a way that may or may not support your family origin of system. Because you, the test is if you, if you believe that when you say something or do something that you know is not in alignment with that system, that there will be consequences you don't want to face, so you decide to suppress your own will, you've not individuated. You're still part of that system. That system is still running your future. And you copy and paste it. Because everybody knows what is acceptable and not acceptable in their family of origin. People know power dynamics in their family of origin. People know structure in their family of origin. Who is respected? Who is Whose voice is here? Whose voice is there? Who is that? You know it. Who is allowed to speak? Who is not allowed to speak? Who is the black sheep? Who is the red sheep? Who is the white sheep? You know that structure intuitively. Unless you've not, again, individuation will make you go, I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see. I, I understand. Well, that ain't my stuff. That ain't my stuff. And then you, part of maturing, you, you start your own family, your own family unit. You are a mom, you are a wife. The power you now have is to say, do you want to copy and paste that system? Because if you don't fix the past, you repeat it. Do you want your future to be run by the past? Individuation is to say, ah, thank you so much. But this individual, I'm going to detach. And then the, the wisdom God will give me. Let me design a new system, a new order. Because that's the whole part of a man shall leave his father and mother. Eh? And will be cleaved to his wife. Is that God designed that a new union can build its own system. You can copy and paste what works. But you also can say that stuff is not for here. Individuation is a natural process where people grow out of their family of origin, family system, and they can become independent, become their self-agent, and they don't have to copy or agree with the past anymore. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. There, there's, there is a price to be paid to detach. Nobody wants to, most people don't want to pay the price. Nobody, actually, nobody wants to pay the price. That's why the governing, God actually didn't want the child to be the one to detach. God made it in a way that the parents are supposed to be the one to lose in the control. Right? The responsibility of detachment is a gift parents give their child when the child marries and moves on. It's a gift. It's like when a mom carries a child, if you don't cut the umbilic umbilical cord, you are refusing to see the child as an independent human outside of the mom. When the child is inside the mom, yes, you feed, what you feed it, you are, you are the caregiver, the child is dependent. What you eat, they eat. You smoke, they smoke. That's why you have to be careful. Caregivers ought to be careful because it's about protection. But when the child is done, when God has finished using the body of the mom, when God has finished using, the family unit, to raise a child. Train up a child in the way the child should go. When the child is old, the child, child will not depart from the training. But the child is supposed to depart from the unit. When a mom gives birth to a baby, a physical baby, you did all the work. Your sleepless nights, on and on and on. Yes, give you accolade. Tap, tap. A woman, a woman that refused to cut the umbilical cord, that is wickedness. And there are energetic cords people don't break. That they ought to. Oh, yes, I carried you nine months. Okay. Somebody gave birth to you. They cut it. They let you go. The next, this is the law that good people are abusing, spiritual laws. Abraham, leave your father's house. These things are, you, you see all through Bible Paint this thing. Read your Bible again. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal your own stuff to you. Esau and Jacob, med people meddling, sharing destinies. Hmm? 
So a mom, a mom that has a baby, individuation requires, who's going to cut the cord? It's not, typically, it's not the responsibility of the baby to cut the cord. It's right of passage. It's a law. It's a spiritual law. God uses other people to bet other destiny and equip and train. Ultimately, though, God wants his people unto himself. Children of Israel, leave Egypt. The God that gave Israel to Egypt also say, oh yeah, I want them to come and serve me on this mountain. I want, I now want my people back. I used you to incubate them. I used you to grow them. I used you to mature them. It doesn't mean you own them. Those who attempt to control you think they own you and they own your, your reality. And that's, that stuff is real energetically. So individuation is a term coined to explain the dynamics that happens when, when a child is trying to be independent, to, to, to break away from the system that raised it, to go and craft its own system independently as your soul believes is right for you. But part of the struggle is when that system comes for you. I always say they are culture police. <laughs> when you are trying to break free and become an independent thinker. Oh my gosh, culture police, all kinds of... They will say, ah, why did you do... That's why most people don't break out. Because it takes serious courage, serious courage, freedom. That's why Christ would say it is for freedom I've set you free. Don't be yoked again in yoke, right? Is that there are many things people burden people on. Family units could burden, could do this, could do all those things. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free, which overrides and supersedes all of these energetic things that humans do. They are originally designed for good, for possibility, positivity, raise people, let them go. Raise the next generation, let them go. Then generation will raise next generation, let them go. Right? By design. Pass on good things, good vibes, help, serve, say thank you, gratitude, forgiveness. But that stuff has been hijacked. If they don't do it for you, you now have to do it for yourself. The, um, another, um, Puppy, just a word I want to just give again. Eye level. Does that make sense? Guys, type, react, um, ask questions. Did, did that help you? And uh, you don't call yourself aunt, but by the way, anyway, that's your own thought. But let me move on. That was a distraction. The next one is differentiation. Differentiation is also is, is the right to be different. <laughs> guys you see as as your fingerprint there's only you know fingerprint is your fingerprint is you're the only one that has that fingerprint so by god's design already your fingerprint is different how you speak is different what you think is different but the people who question how different you are they want you to conform conformity makes it easy for people to be controlled. In any system that wants to control people, conformity is the rule. Do things this way. The people who write the rule say this is the rule. Culture. Culture says, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Oh yeah, everybody do this. Anybody that doesn't do this, culture police arrest them. <laughs> Label them. Everybody will be saying, ah, Culture said, culture said, culture said, culture said. They, er they erode and abuse your difference. Your personality does not shine. People's personality does not shine in any culture where it's control, command and control. Because the only way you control people is to make them conform. Do the same thing, say the same thing. And many family units, that's part of the problem. Conform to the parents, the will of the parents, da 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 da. When you say this, they'll say, ah, your sister doesn't do it that way. Why are you different? Ah, ah, your brother did it better. Your own you is problem. Anxiety. Because the person on the receiving hand of control, they break you. They break you down. The people who control, they don't, they don't, consciously, they don't even know the damage they're making. And they'll say, ah, I didn't mean it that way. Ooh, responsibility is the law of the other now. People need to be responsible for the effect of these things, senseless things they're doing. Differentiation is when you, your difference, like your true authentic version of you 
you you allow yourself to shine in the world as your fingerprint is unique to you giving yourself the freedom to be a dif- to be different from the people that even bettered you you know why this is so important there is a spirit in man the inspiration of the lord almighty gives it understanding there's an there's an encoding of your spirit that was not given birth to by flesh children not born out of man but born out of the spirit of god is independent of the natural laws you say yes this is helpful good if you cannot be different Listen, your deep, the God is God in His uniqueness made everybody distinct, unique. You, the way you see life, the way you think. But when people start questioning your difference, <laughs> that's the problem. They can't accept your difference. They can't accept your uniqueness. They can't accept your distinctness. They can't your, accept your individual. They disrespect you, demean you, accuse you, judge you, label you. That's what people are going through today. It breaks people. Because you have to exert your will to be to be who you really are. You actually have to be strong. They who know their God will do exploits. You have to know the source of your power, the source of your personality, the source of your audacity. And you have to speak as the agent, right? Ambassador of God. And that ambassador of God is the spirit of God in you. And that spirit is not supposed to be ruled by accusation. By who? Who said what, when? Do you answer to them? You answer to God. You get to a place, spiritual maturity, where you know the governing, the governing rule in the kingdom of heaven hey, is you and God. If you don't get to that point, I don't know. Pray that God will help you get to that point where the person lording over your right submit yourself under the mighty hand of God, not another man. Samuel, Samuel, you see, God is trying to get Samuel out of under Eli. Eli has already failed as a prophet. His own son and Eli, they are already destined for right. Samuel and her son is being trained. Imagine if Eli, everything Eli believed, the way he changed his son, he put all of that toxicity inside Samuel. Will Samuel be as useful? One of the, the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. When he was young, God started calling him so that God can program him himself, not Eli. Because Eli and his son, they've already picked their own direction. They've gone against God. But Samuel is in that, he's in, he's in that house. Samuel is being raised in the house where people have already gone against the will of God. God so say, Samuel, Samuel, let me start calling you directly now. Don't say prophet Eli is the voice of God because that guy, is the things I told him to do with his son, he didn't do it with his son. So I don't want his hand to touch you. Me and you, we will talk with one another. Some of you, you need to understand that you can be in a house and a reality. That is going opposite. <laughs> they've, they've, they've made their decision. Eli, this, his son, this, in the temple, they are touching things they shouldn't turn, turn back. Imagine if they are the ones now training Samuel. Or Samuel is looking up to them as the source of his program. God, so they say, Samuel, Samuel, you see, Anna gave you to that house, but I'm the one to train you because I want to use you, me and you. Not you and Eli, right? Because many people say, her father in the Lord. Please check your father in the Lord again. Do like this. <laughs> are you doing the will of God? Or you are just carrying title everywhere? You see my professor glass. Check in. Because when God wants to use you, the Holy Spirit will be your teacher. Okay, I'll leave that one. I think I <laughs> that one. You get it. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. The best thing Eli did was. Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. The best thing Eli did was he pointed him back to God. Everybody's supposed to point you back to God because the source of your intelligence, of your purpose, is not man. The person you will give account to is not man. It's God. Okay. 
she's amazing i watch all yeah i watch you all the time it's so easy to understand is that what you're saying okay good this is i like that that's a testimony because i i work really really hard to make complex topic very digestible even to children even to children but this thing is academic level very very advanced stuff but i make it that's why i dramatize i laugh i make these things pleasurable so that you can use it this is science backed there's a lot of psychology right there's supposed to be like therapy you pay money right there are a lot other classes in my school but you know i'm i'm trying to create awareness because one of the things yesterday i wrote down i said people don't really know what peace is it has been hijacked people don't really know what went wrong? Confusion. But people ought to know something is not normal. Your job is to search out what is normal. Your job is to, is to, is to say over your life, you want to live in peace. I'm telling you, if you, you have to guard, that's why it's a guard. It's, it's, it's active. It's not passive. Entropy is, is real. It's active. Okay. Um, what did you want to type? It didn't come in. Um, type it again. I'll I'll read it out. So we've talked about independence, interdependence, dependence. We talked about self-agency, individuation, differentiation. What I want to talk about is I've mentioned it a few times. It's 100 percent Okay, good. Um, this concept of autonomy. <laughs> you know, they say autonomous vehicle. <laughs> Listen, it's everything is related. Okay. Um, think of it in, in terms of how you drive your life. Um the decisions you have to make, the tough decisions you have to make on where you want to take your life and who you want to be. Hmm? Because some people can individuate, they can differentiate, they can they can have self agency, but they don't have autonomy. They will go and be asking. They might be living somebody else's life, and asking other people for the script for their own future. For you to be fully autonomous, it's like you almost have to have a relationship with God and make sure the person leading your life. Right. So this is about. Who is leading where you're going? Where are you going? Who is leading it? Because oftentimes you have to defend those decisions, those choices. You have to deep, right? To be you have to defend and take your ground. This requires a fighting spirit. Many people give up because when your autonomy is questioned. It's like driving on the highway. What right do you have to be on this highway? Don't go here. Don't go here. Why are you go? How you're going to navigate life? Okay. Yeah. From where you are to where you need to be, and and whose scripts are you going to use? Who is going to dictate that? Because you can have self agency, but you are reading the wrong script. You are listening to wrong voices. You are scrolling on social media. Social media, it is what it is. Make sure, just like you're following me, make sure that the spirit of God in you confirms the voices, right? That is directing your life, influencing your life, right? It's tied to influence. It's tied to leadership. Who is leading you? Okay. And why are you taking direction from them? Is it because it's good for you or because there's a weakness in you, right? People who are confused, instead of seeking clarity, they just start being followers blindly. They start following everybody. And then you, when you arrive where you're not supposed to arrive, you did that to you. The consequence of the choices you make and where you arrive and how you're driving and what's influencing what you're doing. It's up to adults. When you are young, you say you want to go to school. Somebody will drive and say, oh, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. 
but ultimately you're still supposed you're the one to read the book okay you want to get married this is the person you've picked other people's voices can come ah do you see this, 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 this? we don't like him what would you do with those voices autonomy requires you okay irrespective of opinions and this and this you will drive your life and make choices that you have to stick with and fight for and hold on to as true for you but many people who don't want to take that stand yes they are independent yes they can do whatever they want to do but the choice the decisions you want to make you can still give your power away <laughs> although you can still you can still instead of your power being hijacked by control you can still willingly give away the promised land. Nobody stole it. You gave it away because of, right? Esau and Jacob, the path right, because of porridge. Uh, you, 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 it's, it's like you devalue people. You, you, you know, when people make these choices, you first have to devalue your own thoughts, your own voice, your own opinion. You devalue what's rising up within you in your spirit, the voice of God within you. You almost have to devalue it in exchange for something less inferior. Those are the temptations. Jesus, bow down. I'm not bowing. But it requires superior knowledge to know the value of the things in your hands. Because people give it away. They give marriages away. They give things away because of ignorance. You are, you are independent, meaning you... <laughs> People who willingly give things of value, their own life, their own reality, their own energy. The lie of the enemy makes people, okay, unknowingly give their bad rights away. And there are many tools used to do this thing. Culture is one of them. Right? Systems are one of them. They will come up with a story. Ah, God, if you, Jesus, if you jump off this cliff, Eh? You see angels? Eh? They are waiting. They will catch you. Bible said it. Ah, Bible said. They will make you change the direction of your life. The prophets. You remember the young prophets that they sent on an errand? They said, don't stop. Don't eat. Go and deliver this. In the middle of that journey, an older prophet with a lying said, uh-uh, am I not a prophet too? I know God. I've been doing God before you, the young prophet. Instead of holding on to the truth of what God said, because this one was saying, I'm more superior. I'm more powerful. If I have more access to God than you, if you believe those lies, what happened to the young prophet? Is it lying or beard that thought? That's the Old Testament, but I'm telling you that if you don't I have, if you don't know your God, if you don't know you, if you don't have the word of God inside you, you can be easily swept away. You can be independent, but you can be tricked into submission of your power, your authority to a lesser figure because you agreed, you submitted. And part of quantum leap ascension, part of your ascension is your voice, God's voice. Use it to go up. Anything else, right? You don't you don't come down. If God said build the wall, God gave you an assignment, but you are taking on other people's assignment. This stuff just anyway. Download the workbook, it's it's available. Uh let me see. Oh, should I talk? I want to. There's one here, triggers and manipulation. Should I talk about? <laughs> should I talk about that one? Hmm. To talk about that one, let me bring up my 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 snazzy um diagram. Let me go scientific a little bit. Do you see the diagram? Yeah. I'm switch. I'm switching gears now because I always take note of what I want to cover. Then I decide, okay, yes, no, but I think this might be um, triggers and manipulation. 
Ready? By the way, thank you, everybody, joining. You want to watch the replay if you're joining, right? It's We've gone almost two hours in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll cover... Uh, you see, God designed everything to work positively for us. Hmm? But those things can be easily hijacked if you don't stand guard. Okay? So, on one hand, there's a principle of remembrance. Remembrance. You have memory. You have your past. Um, and memory can be recalled. Things can happen in the moment that makes you remember childhood past memories because you are carrying you are carrying your own storage capacity right for your memory you are carrying it around right okay good the concept of remembrance can also reintroduce emotions and feelings and they can be positive or negative somebody can make you remember oh your last vacation and you go oh that failed it can make you transport your body can be transported to experience the emotions and feelings of your past. Meaning that your physical body will respond. You see the diagram, endocrine system, central nervous system, emotions, feelings, memory. Certain things can trigger a reaction in your body tied to memory that might look like something that has happened in the past. I'm also saying for good is how God designed this thing. You can, you know, Bible talks, God will say, tell your children to your children, right? About me. God will always bring to remembrance. Remember how I rescued you, how you, I brought you out of Egypt, right? We recall, remember David recalling what God did for him, lions and the bear, so that he can confront. Because he said, oh, Goliath, I'm going to deal with you now. And I know what to do because my past gives me the confidence to deal with the present. That is courage. That's positive of remembrance. Meaning your physical body will act in accordance to the courage you've built in your past. Now, please, the old flip side is that the insecurities of your past can flash in your can flash in a moment. Something can happen that make you remember how weak you were, how tired you were, the childhood trauma, the thing. Something, somebody can just say something in a meeting. And your past flashes like that, remembrance. And in that moment, your physical body can be taken down with the emotions and feelings of the past. This is why you do emotional healing. Those who want to go to eyes of success, if you don't correct the past memory, they can be what holds you back from your future and destiny. Because in any moment, memory that you're carrying around Remembrance, the concept of remembrance can make you stronger or weaker. And I'm saying the weaker side of you, this is what, when you don't heal emotionally, when you don't fill in the gaps, when you don't arise and mature from what you were made to feel when you were young, so that your voice cannot be weak or weakened. If you encounter similar people that want to do similar things to you, what would your response be? And I'm saying response because these things as, act so fast. Before you are thinking, it, it happens. Triggers are so quick because muscle memory, all of those things, are, your past is like your body knows how to act the way it has acted in the past. The more you've done it in the past, right? So if anxiety is, somebody says this, they are taking you to the past where, where you were controlled and you didn't have power. So many people are living, their body is stuck in the past replaying how they acted in the past and they cannot move past it. So when they sound, ah, the government is the problem. Well, somebody was the problem in your past. You didn't fix it. You didn't grow up. You didn't mature. Now you are seeing shadows everywhere. Delusion. You're coming up with stories that everybody's the enemy. Everybody weakens you. Everybody's controlling you because there's also something vibrational. You are the priest over your life. If you said, something, something happened and you don't clean up and you don't forgive and you don't let go and you don't de-energize the power that thing has over your life. It will be making up stories about those things 
and it will even the law of attraction it will be attracting because you've energized it energy will be attracting the same behavior more people will treat you the way you've not cleaned up if people controlled you when you were young and you didn't deal with that you are going to attract and build relationships of control narcissistic people will be running at you because you are an easy prey <laughs> let me remove the diagram now people who don't do in our work they are easy prey for the worst experiences in life you know why the door was opened when you were a child you accepted it you are a grown-up adult you are still vibrating ah, i can't do this you don't know what you're attracting when you're not going to marry you attract this the people who look like the perpetrators but when you start growing and maturing autonomy independent thinker self-agency you start going back like the workbook makes you go back and say what strengths did i inherit what's the other one and you start taking responsibility so that you don't repeat the past if it, the past you don't fix fix they repeat the past 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 and you have to undo these things with love respect right respect for yourself respect for god's calling on your life gratitude for the contributions because i always say there's a polarity in life those who loved you may have hurt you those who hurt you may have loved you you have to reconcile the two and your ability to handle those two things will give you clarity rightly dividing the word of truth but you're living in a time when people say swallow the entire fish they will tell you to debone the skills i'm giving you is the fish is going to be delicious but can we learn how to remove the bones life is delicious relationship is fantastic but can you learn how to debone so that they don't choke you <laughs> so that you don't choke yourself you don't choke other people so that you are well in your own hands and other people god can give you leadership over other, other people because all these things people are doing you know it. it's not it doesn't feel good but they tell you eh, what is feelings what is emotions oh you're too fluffy fluffy ah feelings emotions they're in your blood it is what is running in your blood it is the power powering your life good or bad your health your wealth everything is dependent on that's why the fruits of the spirit is healing it comes to fix the fruits of the holy spirit the presence of the holy spirit came to fix feelings and emotions the feelings and emotions culture says you should ignore that doesn't matter just bring your head let us control you bring your head make yourself available so that other people can you can be dependent on other people and they start breaking you because for that relationship to persist something must break and people pay for it with their health people who don't mature when i say mature i don't mean age i don't mean age samuel samuel god can call you eight year old according to the power of god inside you according to the time you have invested in saying god teach me help me according to the word of god you have ingested that you can use to clean up all those wrong programming the one that makes you go oh, what did i do when you clean up you say don't come here <laughs> because when you clean your house you will not let anybody come and be terry messing it up you just say thank you so much they will be give you don't want assignment anymore okay on that note oh this was loaded right yeah very deep oh did you did you have a question i just saw your comment you say hi coach polite oh are you just coming in you just dropped in i'm 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 signing out <laughs> watch out for the replay trust me power pack let me know what you think download the family of origin self-assessment workbook if you're a first generation wealth builder you cannot ignore this you cannot ignore this because the heights of heights of success requires you to mature not just age but to do this in our work because greater responsibility it comes with greater responsibility when god wants to advance you spiritual awakening spiritual revival spiritual ascension okay if you want to receive here on earth what god has for you 
what is already yours, the promised land. You realize that Moses didn't enter the promised land because of emotions and feelings. How he continued to react. Trust me, you say 40 years before, he reacted, hunger. He did damn, he ran away. The same emotional thing he didn't deal with, it kept showing up. It kept these things. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't go until you fix it. It is the reason God didn't let him enter the promised land. For those who are saying emotions and feelings don't matter, the way you act, the things you believe, the way you think, they matter to what you can handle, the things of God you can handle, the responsibility you can handle, the money you can handle, the relationship you can handle. And when people don't do this inner work, the relationship in their hand, the way you handle yourself, you handle other people. You handle your spouse the same way. You talk this the same way. Then the person is not receiving. Toxicity comes in. Ah, this, ah, that. But at least don't accept what is not normal. Commit to doing the work to normalize, to optimize, to improve your experience. This is more valuable than money. There's no money now. You can pay anybody to get peace. For those who are saying money, money, this. Listen. What I give and offer are the tools for you to optimize your business and life. I'm selling tools. You want to build a house? Yeah, my dear, yeah, is cement. So that you can plaster. <laughs> you, you can paint. So the air is paint. It is your house. It is your life. It is your business. It is your reality. It is your body. We are all traveling here on earth. What I have done deep research on is, hey, I found a trick. I found resources. God has showed me things that we will help you. What took people 30 years to solve? Listen, yeah, come, 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 come. This is how people build wealth. I'm just sharing tips, 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 and tools you won't find anywhere else. And that's what you invest in. You pay to receive the tools that will help you build a successful life and business. Because ultimately, can you really buy health? Can you really buy? You can. That's the gift of God. And even the Bible is giving us this gift. I'm just saying, apply the Bible. Let me teach you how to apply the Bible. This thing is effective. The efficacy of God's word is alive. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged word. What does it do? It goes inside you. Dividing asunder, souls and spirits, bones and marrow. Do you see that? The word of God goes into emotions and feelings, the, the muscles to your bones. The bones create blood cells, right? The hormones that determine how your cells, the word of God is effective, guys. It is sharp. It is precise. It goes into emotions and feelings and fix them. And the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kind. And if Christians don't insist that they want to enjoy the peace Jesus died for, it's already stolen. The thief came to steal. This is what peace in your own mind, own body. You can't you. You, you, are, you can people who have billions of dollars. Look at them. Peace, precious blood of Jesus bought it for. I'm saying apply it. Come and learn how to apply, so that you will sleep well at night. Your body is not tweaking because the word of God will go straight to the affairs of the heart. Give me your heart. Let me help you be whole. Give me your mind. Let's teach. Pour the word of God into it. Flush out those nonsense. People accusing you. There's nothing wrong with you, but you can make yourself wrong when you accept the judgment of other people. Leave people. Let them go and find somebody else. <laughs> just, there's sometimes you just say, ha, ah. at this stage, somebody think they can call and be saying, you did this. I beg you. Let everybody just, the, the way we are now, peace me, peace, peace. I just spoke, <laughs> peace, peace of God. I give you peace not as man gives you because man have their own. They have their own story. I'm sending you back to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I'm appealing. <laughs> oh my God. You can't make this thing up. Mm. Anyway, I was, you know, I'm keeping some juicy stuff for my students. Only in my school. Don't you mess with that academy. Come join us. Because we break it down. That place is more. <laughs> <it's> more. <laughs> we will break it down. <laughs> we, will, we will break it down. This is the, to me, 
what else matters than this i don't know your wealth your health your family your yourself what else are people chasing what are people looking for <laughs> maybe we should go and buy the tools for that <laughs> let me just go now okay god bless you all is there any question comment i know <laughs> excuse me i'm ready to ex you know go but I, let me i know some people um polite says um okay i will watch it again yes so you you just came in so i know some people are just coming in but any anything any questions anything you want me to cover i covered a lot hmm? if you're team replay let me see like react like let me know this helped can you and ask questions i love right when people ask questions then i can provide uh, more more answers in your context hmm so i'm wrapping up i'm just i feel like does somebody have does somebody wants to say something or ask a question instagram do you want to well okay i'm just Lucy says I'm here for the re replay. Okay, so you're waiting. When when this is uh, processed, then the replay, right? Okay, good. What else? Feedback, comments. I'll give. I feel like I need to. Um, I I'll wait. This is very unusual, but I'll wait. If you're somebody you are thinking you want to ask a question, but you don't know what will coach do, you say, type it. I'll give you time. Type it. Uh, Lucy says. Thank you for, for sharing your wisdom. Awesome. Did it help? Okay, somebody, uh, how do you balance your desire and your purpose on it? Let me let me show you the diagram. I covered um oh, okay, let me show you this diagram. So do you see at the bottom? I wish my I could have a mouse that can be pointed I, i've tested some things where i could maybe I'll, I'll i'll see if i can still connect those technical things where i can be drawing and pointing i've tested it out but i've not used it here so do you see at the bottom at the base of this diagram do you see the spiritual side where i, I typed power desires will oops purpose dreams you see that okay your spirit yourself the breath of god that, you, that that gave birth to you that is traveling and experiencing the human this human experience when i say human experience is that this is an opportunity to be alive god give you god gave man the head gave you time he gave you everything packed and says oh yeah go and enjoy go and enjoy planet earth go into your mama show up you know, just like Bible will say the fruit, the seed is inside the fruit, except the grain falls to the ground, the life inside it doesn't come out. What usually happens is that you, self, that is given the human experience, you carry purpose, vision, dreams, aspiration, talent, power, right? Your spiritual self, you carry a lot that has to be unpacked see why i knew i needed to you, you see you see why it's very good to just listen i wanted i was i was done but i felt somebody there's a question somebody needs to ask and and maybe this is it for other people start you can drop comments because this is this is a good one so your question is balancing desire and purpose and i'm saying you have a lot that you are here to do you carry so much when we talk about potential what then happens the discipline and the intelligence and the knowledge that will help you build the capacity and the capacity you must develop physically to contain your spiritual aspirations that's the assignment 
you have will, you have desires, you have hopes. They are in you spiritually, but you have to bet. When I say nurturing greatness, the seed of greatness is in your spirit that is supposed to be expressed here on earth physically. But the journey to manifesting requires you to nurture your spirit. You have to grow up to be a baby of greatness. But if you are eating malnourished, you are not cultivating greatness. You are not taking your life seriously. You are not focused. You are not intentional. You are not directional. <laughs> and your time, energy, and resources is, you are giving it to something else. Who will do this work for you? The work you came here to do. Who will do? Who is responsible for manifesting destiny? So Christians are loaded with blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings. You carry the Holy Spirit. But at best, the Holy Spirit will be giving you instructions and guidance. You see, you have to do the work. And the problem you have are lazy Christians and ignorant Christians. Christians who refuse to learn and to do. In physical realm, or oh, in physical realm, you want to go to space, you will do, you, 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 will, you will work. Occupy till I come, right? Occupy till I come. That occupying is work. So that's, you want to manifest? It's not, it's not balance. It's intentionality. You have to insist. You ha the reason I, all these things that I just talked about, as long as you are living your life for other people, as long as you are under control, as long as the voice of other people is running your life, they are your God. God cannot tell you, cannot direct you because the spirit of the Lord is telling you who to be, what to do but it's in competition with all those other voices. Your energy has been stolen. You are managing other people. You are doing this for other people. But the assignment, the one assignment God has given people, abandon. Because you think it is easy. That's your full-time assignment. You want to bet purpose? You want to bet purpose? Focus on betting purpose. Don't go into survival mode. Go into full-on purpose. The day you sign up for God assignment, God himself is ready to back you. That's what people don't understand. God will not stay. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. That's what Jesus will do. All powerful God. <laughs> the all competent one. <laughs> he will stand by you and wait for you to take your step of obedience. That's what he will back. He will back and multiply the works of your hands. He will bless the work of your hands. Where is the work of your hands? So Christians, <laughs> that is not showing up to the day of the assignments and they are telling funky stories. Government is this. You are busy using your time, energy, voice to be complaining. Complaining in the desert. You know what it got them? Snakes biting people. That's what complaining got them. For people who don't understand spiritual principles, you complain too much, you attract stuff that will be tormenting and bite. You don't understand. Only people who are busy with purpose, those are the people angels are running to bless, smack blessing on. Read your Bible again. The people, he will say, Gideon, you have work to do. You have to leave threshing floor. You see, God will call people out of survival mode. You are threshing, true, true, true. You are threshing in hiding. Many people are hiding. <laughs> hiding is comfortable. You are hiding because of survival, blah, blah, blah. The day God will call you, you will leave threshing floor. You will go to battle. And so, yeah. There's no way around. There's no, there's no shortcut around this thing. If you want to work with God, you sign up for it. Many are called few are chosen. The harvest is plenty. Laborers are few. That thing is so true. <laughs> it's so true. I've come to know that. People don't want to work. They want the good of... Listen, your spirit is loaded. God has answered all your prayers. But the persistence I think I've answered that. This was the question I waited for. I'm, I'm ready to go.
I've gotten my approval. My job is done. Signing out.